We talk about the Harriet Tubman's. Mm -hmm. We talk about the uh, Carters. We talk about um, Frederick Douglass, Douglas, yes. Barack Obama. And these people are all wonderful people and have done wonderful things. Awesomeness. But now, <laughs> with all that rich history, mm. with all, with such a cloud of witness, you said, I'm yourself. in scripture now. Yeah, yeah. Well, where are we as a people? Because Christ, but we worship everywhere we go. I'll let me worship. It's you and I. It's you and I. You can lie as you just and not be ashes. Christ, but we worship everywhere we go. I'll let me worship. It's you and I. move away from slavery as well, but did not fully accomplish, right. just the pockets. Well, we, I think what it was is it goes back to my initial thought about God. Yes. That when, when we remove God from the equation, then you will find yourselves with the inability to rise. And that's what uh, uh, I believe our um, generations now, mm -hmm. these, these generations now, we have gotten away from God being the center and leaning and depending on God and, and looking to the hill for our help, asking God and praying yeah. to God for direction. And so now we are lost. And the sad thing, woman of God, is that in slavery, they were not breaking the law to go to jail. Mm -hmm. But now that we're free, we're breaking laws to go to jail. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. We, we come from a forced labor for nothing to now go labor again for free <laughs> for nothing. And then, not saying that the system is not working against us. There's some, there's that, definite there's flaws definite in, in the, the system. Systems. But don't let the system become your system of excuse. Right. That's my, my point. And, and that's, that's my point. Because even back in... Um, uh, back in slavery times here in America. Yes, tragedy, terror, mm -hmm. and like you said, lawlessness, mm -hmm. just for us as a people. But even with all of that, the idea to be free yeah. was greater than the tragedy of being enslaved. Yes. And now we don't have that anymore. We don't have that. Now we have some young men that freedom doesn't mean that to them. It's, yeah. it's not the most important thing now. Now, you know, it's about securing that bag and any way we can do it, and, oh, which yeah. may cost you your freedom. Freedom. And then you got a, a young fellow claiming turf yeah, that he doesn't own. Yeah, talk about that. You don't, you don't own it? You're not renting it? You, it's you're not, not, you're not, you're not, it's no mortgage. It's no mortgage. You, you're a but, renter, but, if yeah. you're that. If you're, I'm talking about you claiming a, a sign, a, area. A, a area of town as yours, and it's not yours. At any moment, they come take you up, take and, you jail. And not only that, but we're killing for it. We're killing yeah. for territory that we don't even own. Yeah. That if the owner came and said, you're no longer allowed to stand on this property or whatever, that you have to move. Wow. But we are finding ourselves battling for some property or land that, that we don't even possess. Which goes back to a mindset, meaning we can say we're out of Egypt, but we're taking Egypt with us. Yes. The behavior. Yes. We're still sub subjecting ourselves to a, a diabolical lifestyle mm -hmm. that God said was never supposed to right. be. Right. Now, if, if, rent, if we're supposed to come out of this, and now we're out, why are we acting as though we're still there? Right. Again, I said earlier, here we, we, we acted more with the law in slavery and free and, and bound, and then that we're out of slavery mm -hmm. and we walk like we are slaves right. by the laws of the land. And then we find ourselves, if this is our wilderness, can I just go here? Oh, yes. If this is our wilderness to get Egypt out of us, then maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe we need to return back to looking to God. Yes. We have to set aside our ideas, our plans and thoughts. Because that, to me, has gotten us in trouble as a people. Mm -hmm. we, we have a lot, oh, and, and this new thing that I hear about the word of God being um, yeah. the white man's way of controlling black people 
and that this is not who we are as black people. This is not our history. This is not. But see, they fail to understand the one thing about the word of God, that it, he, the word of God will transcend all generations. Yes. So the Bible is here because, not because I say it, or, but God said it just will not fade away. And then the history they talk about is a history of violence. Yeah. It's a history of anger. Right. It's a history of uh, we're going to retaliate. When that's not the will of God. No. You know, well, you, you, you believe in Allah or however you want to place him as the God of, of, of your life. It's not about revenge. It's right. about right. being better right. and doing better. Here we history. We had our first black president. That was the most um, Memorial Day ever before. Right, that was a day wonderful. I cried. Right. I, I wept. Right. Not because he was a black man, but yeah, it was because he was a black man. And it, it was it was a little bit of both. It was a history in, 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 the, in making. the making. Right. And uh and yet still you would thought from that point, this would be the momentum to say, let's go get our stuff. I don't need a mule and three acres of land. Forty. A uh, forty acres of land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want a hundred acres. <laughs> But I want to get it legally. Right. So my thing is, as a pastor, and I'm very passionate about our people, I believe that a lot of the young men in prison, young men going to jail every day, is a, is a mindset that's been given an excuse to be a slave. Because you go to jail, you're a slave. Right. We have it. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Your you're, 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 uh, rights are in, uh, revoked. Yes. Um, and that's a law. It is. That's a it amendment. Is. Constitution, yeah. As a matter of fact, um, it's it's the it's the main reason why I did this show, um, because like I said, we talk about Black history, we talk about the Harriet Tubmans, mm -hmm. we talk about the uh, Carters, we talk about um, Frederick Douglass, Douglas, yes. Barack Obama, and these people are all wonderful people and have done wonderful things, awesomeness. But now, <laughs> with all that rich history. Mm. With all, with such a cloud of witness, you said, that. I'm in scripture now. Yeah, yeah. Where are we as a people? Because the one thing I do know is that a lot of our history, a lot of the people who have led our forefathers, who have led the, they look to God. They look to God. And that was the escape of Egypt. Yeah. That was our oasis. That was our way out. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, we allowed our own people to trick us to go against him. Right. The very God that brought us out, now we are right. faulting him right. for being out the way we are. Right. We we pray and the same thing with the Egyptians. Well I mean with the children Israel. of Israel. Yeah. Uh, they prayed to God to deliver us. for generations to deliver us. Deliver mm -hmm. us, deliver us, deliver us. And then when he delivers us, so miraculously, you know, he delivers them, you know, crossing the Red Sea, mm -hmm. you know, you know, water out the rock, yeah. you know, birds Where's flying out the air, just yeah. falling down, you know, you got, you got sweet bread every morning, you yeah. know. This is the God that you now murmur and complain yeah. about. Or the, this is the very now point where you still find yourself not understanding that God is with you because it's not a perfect picture. And we as black people, we, we, I believe are in that mindset because it's not a perfect picture. Mm -hmm. We are now turning our back on the very God that had delivered us. Mm -hmm. And now we're trying to poke holes in, well, Lincoln didn't have anything yeah. to do with the emancipation. It doesn't matter who hand yeah. it, that it was. We, we don't really care who hand that sign. We don't care how it came about. The fact of the matter is that God brought deliverance. And so for that, because it's not a perfect picture the mm -hmm. way we would have done it, we find ourselves poking holes in the delivery that God had for the people of uh, the, uh, our African Americans here in, mm -hmm. the, in on this land. And so for me, I think that we as a people have to go back. We need to go back and not be so wise in our own eyes, not, not be so uh, lean into our own understanding, uh, thinking that now because we are building universities and mm -hmm. and uh, and our philosophies and and our logic now has kicked in that we somehow can dismiss the only one true deliverer that mm -hmm. there is and and now feel like there's another way that we're going to get over or continue to get over. Our generation and the generations before and the generations that come will always need God. And, you know, I think about, you know, the churches, the black church, we all mm -hmm. celebrate black mm -hmm. history. Very rare, I, I think, you go to a, a church where there's a white pastor, 
the dollar meant Caucasian, they're gonna have a black history service. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all within their own rights. Right. Um, but just like everything derived from the black church, we gotta go back to the black church. What I mean by that is we gotta go back to our old landmark, back to the foundation and rebuild ourselves again right. from a mindset, a heart, and, a, a, and the spirit of God in our lives. Because that's the only way we're gonna evolve from where we are. Right. There are those of us who've escaped, but how far have we escaped? Right. Because as far as I get out, I got one pulling back at me. Right. You know, because my thing is this, as the black church, we're teaching black history, we talk about the Harry Tuckman, we talk about them. What about these, the generation we're in now, of the 21st century where these, our people, are out of control to a degree. Right. And, how, and how escaped can you be if your whole family, like, because I have family who I feel like I wish they were in a better place. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, I wish that they would take this thing by the horn. And so even those who may feel accomplished, if you have family that hadn't figured it out yet or that is struggling and, 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 and they have lost their way because they have lost their sense of identity of who they are That's good. as a people, how successful are we? We're not. We're not. And so th I think that that's the one thing as black people, while we have this very rich, prideful mm -hmm. heritage that we have, today, I think, as of today, I think in the city of Columbus, we have 10, is it 10 murders oh, of gun violence more as of that. today? I think more than uh, that. I'm, I'm talking about this for 2020. Oh. Maybe a little bit more than that today, yeah. Well, let's just let's just say ten. Ten. Let's just sure. say we are at least ten. Yes. How proud are we? Because this is black. But the mindset that this is, it's not in my neighborhood. I know. So that's that's the mindset of blacks as a whole. It, what's happening in the South doesn't affect me. Cause I live in the North. But how how much northern am I? We as a people are joined together like a cloth. We should yes. And so if you are at the tip of this end of the cloth and I'm at the tip of the end of this cloth, we're still the one cloth. One cloth. We're not separate. We're together. But, but. And that's where we got to get our minds off of thinking. Because I know people who feel that are black who feel like they're better than other blacks. Yes. Sad um, thing. Sad yeah. to think that we can be so vain um, to think that. But to me... If we're not all crossing over together, to me, mm -hmm. we're all failing. Yes, because my success is based on you being successful too. Right, right. Hopefully. Right. Now we know you can't take everybody with us. Well, everybody Hammer, doesn't want to come. MC Hammer should have learned. He learned that. He taught right. us that. Everybody can't, doesn't want to come. Everybody, everybody doesn't want to come. Wanna come. That's, that's the best thing to say. And those that don't want to come, let it be. But those that want to come, let's go get them. Right. If I make it out, I want to bring you out. Right. But it's kind of like. Don't want to do the Ab Abraham and Lot. Right. God's not telling me to take everybody with me. Right. But there's somebody God want me, that wants right. them to see that if I can come and by serving him, my way out, my, my success is not of my own. Mm -hmm. It's my relationship with God. Exactly. And that's it. Well, you, well the, uh, even, and even with Abraham and Lot, it wasn't that Lot wouldn't have been successful. Mm -hmm. He it was. It was just he wasn't supposed to go with Abraham to, the, to this new to, land. Yes. Uh, and so Lot... God would, could have blessed him right where he was. Mm -hmm. he, my thing is, is that we don't all have to live in the same neighborhoods, but my goodness, we should all, like, I don't think that everybody's going to have the same income. You're going to have people who make $25,000 a year mm -hmm. and people who make uh, $2.3 million a year mm -hmm. salaries, right? Yeah, I'm working on that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We as a black people, I should be, I should be good with, being at 25, if this is my success, I'm yes. successful yes. at $25,000 a year, and you're successful at $2.3 million a year, I don't think that we should have this divide Bears, in, yeah. in, in a, as, as a people. You know, it's just, it's just demographics. For and sure, just, in Black Wall Street, everybody didn't have the same income. Surely they yeah, did. Somebody made more You had money. some who was a doctor. Had, probably had servants. Yes, it is. Yeah, and some who, that's what their job was, to serve a mm -hmm. more prominent person, person who had more wealth. You know, I'm sure the banker 
uh, and then you probably had housemates that yes, were there to serve mm -hmm. his wife. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the success of the community was that they were one. And it's the same thing today. I don't really have, I don't really do the look down on people who work at fast food places. Oh, my fault, my fault. But some people do. Some yeah. people feel as though they, if they've got a desk job, then they feel like they're better than a person who works at a fast food place. And, I, and we as black people, that's, that's something we got to come up off of. Yeah, yeah. We got to stop measuring success based on how much you got in the bank and basically uh, base it off of that person's life as to what they're contributing to the mm -hmm. community. Because to me, servants, Yes, sir. People who serve mm -hmm. uh, are, to me, are some of the greatest people and some of the best people you can ever run up on. Um, I think my whole thought is to this show is that we as a people, as a whole, we have got to get to this place where we recognize mm -hmm. we need God. Only, that's the only way we that's will have we a way out of our present Egypt is to co go back to God, not by church building, right? but by the masses of the heart. Right, the heart. The heart. Turning back to God um, so that these, with these children that are out there in the streets that are killing one another can know the God that we serve. Yeah. Because that's the only reason why you can go out and do a drive-by and take someone's life because a, a, of territory a, yes. that you don't even own. A nation that rejects God, God yes. will reject them. Yeah. Is it possible that we have been rejected because we keep rejecting God as a nation? Uh, I can't, you can't dispute the word. Can't dispute it. Yeah, as much as we don't like to look at it, we can't dispute it. We have to consider what you're saying and maybe um, ponder. Yeah, it's a lie. It's a lie. Because at the end of the day, God loves all people, but do all people love God? And if you love God, he's a God's father. He's going to do right by everybody. We just got to change the mindset of our people. Go back to Egypt and bring them out. But everybody's not going to come out. Right. And those that want to come out, you let them be. But right. those that want to be out, you give them every tool and resources that you have available. i never forget I came across a gentleman that had a barbecue sauce similar to mine. Mine better than his today. His was good at that time. And uh, he was bragging about who helped him. He spoke about some white man helped him. And I said to him, so, well, maybe you can help me. And before I can turn around, he walked away. He was successful in his business, but he wouldn't help me, not realizing I'm the next barbecue sauce man on the planet. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, is that that's the thing. We have fear. Of another of each other's success, when actually your success yes. or my success mm -hmm. is our success. If he brought me in, he automatically got royalties. You know, he could have yeah. got a percentage. Could have been blessed. blessed. Just don't know how. Yeah, could've. yeah. So I think that that is. But that goes back to how it goes back to historic. We didn't talk about that part of the trickery of 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 our, of our counterpart right. with the Willow Lynch and Jim Crow uh, thing that was in place that was working against black people, against black people. And that will let he said, I can teach you, Jim Crow, teach you how to keep your slaves sub, uh, subjected all the time by turning them against each other. Right. The lights against the dark skin, that one that working house against one in the field, mm -hmm. uh, the one get one little bit more uh, uh, leverage than the other, and then making their worst enemy. And them. still they're working together. They didn't just do it with black people, they did it with white, white poor people. Right. To, to, to keep, them keep them at odds. At odds. Keep, keep the black, the poor black, uh, the poor white thing, he was better than the poor black, but they both were poor. Poor, poor. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, history. But it's history, something. That, like I said, in our black history, we have to remember everything. We have yes. to remember the good and the bad. Yes. Uh, if we don't remember the bad, we'll repeat it. And that's what we're doing. And that's where we are now. Yeah. We are not remembering Pin the good. Like we, we remember black history, but we don't remember that there's 10 people this 2020 who lost their lives in, in, um, senseless yeah. gun violence. Dr. And King. We, we sweep it under the rug doing black history because people say something like this to me. We, they talk about us in a negative way anyway. Why, we don't need to highlight the bad. No, we don't need to highlight the bad, but we don't need to sweep the bad up under the rug because yeah. the more we pacify mm -hmm. what is going wrong or where it's going wrong at, the more we pacify it, the more we give excuse to continue in. The only annihilation 
to error or sin or things that are not right is to shine the light on it. And the light will overtake the darkness. Overtake the darkness. That's it. I'm going to take a break and I'll be back to give my final thoughts on this. Thank you for joining me. Thank we'll you. be back in a few minutes. Hi, welcome back to the round table. I wanted to give my final thoughts to uh, what uh, Reverend Powell and I were discussing pertaining to black history and the recognition of our Black History Month. Um, I'm really one that, um, although I do celebrate black history, uh, black history for me is every day. Um, yesterday is my black history. Uh, when I wake up, if the Lord allows me tomorrow, today will be my black history. Uh, so I am one that is, I am um, concerned about the black history. The one that happened yesterday, last week, last month, last year. We have to, as a people, come to understand that our negative black history is growing and becoming more prominent, uh, uh, more producing, more and more and more. Uh, we're starting to see our young people, our young men uh, digress. I do believe this with everything in me, that a people who do not know God or do not reverence God will digress. There is no such thing as standing still or being steady. Uh, if you're not reaching for God, then you are falling to the enemy. Uh, there is no standstill, neutral place. Some people say, well, I'm neutral when it comes to it. I'm just neutral about it. There is no neutral place. You have two servers, uh, places to serve, and that's to God or to the enemy. Um, so I believe that our children, our young people, our young women um, have lost their way because we have lost our reverence for God. I'll go, ha go ahead and, and, and say that even our dignity, our integrity as a people, um, our young women, the beautiful queens and princesses that we have, uh, degrade ourselves on a regular basis in how we conduct ourselves, how we dress ourselves, how we allow the world to touch us. And when I say touch us, I mean in photo, in pictures, in movies, in videos, in any way that they can touch us. We degrade ourselves in allowing them to touch us incorrectly, not realizing who we are as women, as black women, as proud women, as women of, of dignity and integrity. Uh, I always say that um, if you don't take pride in yourself and you allow someone to uh, use you or to dictate to you your value, they will always undercut what you believe you are to yourself. In other words, if you believe you're worth uh, $10, they will always underbid and offer you five. So it's always a degrading from their side, even more than what you may believe about yourself. So you have to keep yourself in a place where you believe you're more valuable than they ever could imagine. Our young men have lost their self-pride in knowing that they are the kings and the princes, prince that they are, that they don't have a value, don't, don't have a voice in our world today. But I want to encourage you young men and young women to take back your integrity, take back your dignity. Remember who you are as a people. First, remembering that you were created in the image of God and after his likeness were you formed. And so to remember that God is the center of our lives. And I know that there's a lot of information out there now that's dictating or trying to tell us who we are outside of uh, biblical principles. But I'm here today to, de to declare that it's all a lie, that God is truly our maker, that he is our father, and that he created us, and that all of these words that are coming that are saying that we uh, should not hear the word of God and that we should not listen to the Bible because it is uh, the white man's word to keep us in bondage. The only bondage that you get 
uh, from the Word of God is not hearing it. You have to hear the Word of God in order to be free. I would say this, um, in the days of old when we had the Word of God as our guide and, the, and we, we lean and depend on the Word of God on a regular basis, if you go back and look, watch our history, you'll see that we were much better people. We were much better in our conduct. We, uh, we weren't in the prisons the way that we are today. We weren't uh, killing each other the way that we are today. Our young women weren't degrading themselves for a dollar the way we are today. And uh, if that is what kept us from being in the place that we are today, then I say it's the place that we ought to run back to. Then I'll say that this is not as bad as we thought it was. We got to find our way back to God. We got to find our way that we understand that God created us not to be in the hand of the enemy, to kill and degrade and to uh, manipulate one another. And I also appeal to those of us who have the power and the authority, that if you have the power and the authority to make the difference in our community, then do it. We cannot be bought and sold like slaves for the almighty dollar, for the sake of us being in a better place but our brothers and our sisters being in a much worse place. We have to have that integrity. And the love of God in our heart will help us to overcome and override when we are uh, being told to turn away from our own people and to not rescue them for the almighty dollar. I want to say to the preachers, to preach that word in season and out of season. To declare God's word, he said if we... Uh, were to preach that word, paraphrasing, that his word would not go out and return to him void. I'm saying that if we will speak God's word, that it will accomplish what it was set to do, it will not return unworked, unproductive. It will accomplish what uh, the Lord will have it to do. So I'm just appealing to our community, our African-American community, our Caucasian community, our Hispanic community, to our community as a whole, to let's get God back into the center of our lives. Let's allow God to take full reign of our lives so that we can find our way, not just as black people, but as God's people, where he has come and rescued us and given us what we have need of and we're able to receive it as such. I thank you all for coming in and being a part of this show. I pray that you have learned something. I pray that you've been empowered to maybe do something. We all can't um, save the world, but if each one reach one, reach two, maybe three, then we can surely, surely take a big bite, a big chunk out of what the enemy is doing in our communities. We have to do something uh, because idle is not an option. Be blessed, and we'll meet you here again next week at the roundtable.